Hello guys, it's Chuck97 back with another tutorial. This time I'm covering a list of mods which I believe will help you in controller. This list was originally made by Delta Trooper, but he asked me to make some tutorials so it's easier for people to install them. I'm not going to do every single mod on this list because some of them I feel like you could do without and you don't really need them. We're actually going to start out with one of the loaders at the bottom of the page, and I think Forge is the best one out of these three, so I'm going to show you how to use that one. Forge is pretty easy to install, all you have to do is go to the link and click the most recent one and download the installer for the easiest install. Once you get through the AdFly link, just go ahead and click skip add and start the download. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and run it and it will open up a fairly basic installer. It should already be set to automatically install for a client, so go ahead and just click OK. This shouldn't take too long to install and a confirmation message should appear. Once you've seen the message, we're going to go ahead and open Minecraft. Now this time, before you run the game, we're going to go and click Edit Profile and go down to the version. Click on the drop down next to Use Version and scroll all the way to the bottom where you'll find the Forge version. Select Forge, click Save Profile and then click Play. It will download a couple of other files and install them and then you'll be ready to go. To confirm that Forge is installed and working, it should say at the bottom left Minecraft Forge. You'll also have a new button that says Mods. Once you've installed other mods through Forge, this is where it will be shown. Time to install the first mod. Optifine. Forge is optional for using Optifine so I'm going to show you how to install it with and without Forge. Just click the link and it will take you to a Minecraft forum page. If you don't understand what all the different versions of Optifine are, just pick standard. Once again when you click download it will take you to another AdFly link where you have to wait the 5 seconds. Once the 5 seconds are up, click skip add and it will begin the download. Now, if you aren't going to use Forge, just go ahead and run the file that you just downloaded. It's fairly similar to the Forge install where you just have to click OK and it will do it for you. Now if you open Minecraft, you will see that it's created a new profile for you. If you wish to just use Optifine, then go ahead and select that profile and click play. However, if you wish to use Optifine with Forge, then you're going to have to do something different. This time we're going to open up the start menu and in the search bar we're going to type percent app data percent. This will take you to a folder with your .minecraft inside of it. So once you've opened the .minecraft, find the mods folder and open that. It really is as simple as just dragging the Optifine file into that mods folder. Now instead of using the Optifine profile, you can go ahead and switch back to the other one and make sure the version is on Minecraft Forge again. And this time when you run Minecraft, you'll notice that when you click on mods, it will show Optifine at the top. I find that a good way to test whether or not Optifine is working is just to join some sort of a world or multiplayer server and just go ahead and press left control and if it zooms in then it's installed because that's a feature of Optifine. Next I'm going to cover how to install Armor Status HUD and Status Effect HUD. I'm not going to bother with Direction HUD because we're going to install a minimap anyway and so there's no point in really having that. Once you click the link there's three things that we're going to need to download. If you scroll down you should find a section called Bispikrikshu's Core plus one jock for king of pronunciation. Click on latest release and this should take you to a download page. Sometimes AdFly annoy me so I didn't feel like going through an AdFly link so this time I click the small blue button which has dl.bspk.rs. This takes you to another page where you have to wait 5 seconds again before you can actually download it. Once the timer runs out go ahead and click download file. Similar to Optifine, once you've downloaded this just drag it into the mods folder. Now that you've installed the core file required for both the armor status HUD and the status effect HUD, we're going to download and install those two mods. If you head back to the page, you'll notice just under the core are the armor status HUD and the status effect HUD sections. Just click the green button and then it should show you a bunch of stuff including the downloads. So click the green button for both the armor status HUD and the status effect HUD and click on the latest link. This will take us to two new pages which look very similar to the core file download. Now all you have to do is do exactly the same thing as before and download those files and put them in the mods folder. I know right, pretty damn simple. Now this time when you open Minecraft you'll notice that there are two cool little animations on your main screen. Also in the mods section you'll see at the bottom it has armor status HUD and status effect HUD. What they do is, is when you're in game, armor status shows you the status of your armor and whatever weapon or tool you have equipped and how much durability they have left. While the status effect HUD gives you a HUD which shows you what sort of statuses that you have applied on you such as poison. This enables you to keep track of the durability of your armor and weapons whilst mid PvP. So basically you know when to run the fudge away. Also it can remind you if your things like regen are running out mid PvP so you know when to throw another pot. 
The next mod I'm going to show you is the Map Writer mod. This gives you a good mini map so you know where you're going, whilst also giving you the ability to set waypoints. Now, the link that Delta gave me only has one for Minecraft 1.7.2, but we're on 1.7.10 when I made this. So I did a bit of simple googling and found a later release for 1.7.10. I'll leave this link on the screen now so you can find it easily. Once again, all you have to do is click the link, download it and put it into the mods folder. This time, when you run Minecraft and load into a world, you'll see a cool little minimap at the top right. I'm not going to explain how to use it and all the mechanics of the minimap, because this is only for installation purposes. And the last mod that I'm going to show you how to install is the shaders mod. We all love the simplistic nature of Minecraft's graphics, but sometimes it's always nice to have a bit of a change and see the beautiful atmosphere that, that the shaders bring. So you're going to need a minimum of two downloads for this, one being the GLSL shaders mod which actually allows you to use the shaders, and the other being the shader pack that you wish to use. The shader pack is pretty much just a resource pack or a texture pack if you want to call it that, but it's for adding shaders. Exactly the same as all the other mods, just download from this link that I'm showing you now and stick it in the mods folder. For the GLSL shaders mod, it actually takes you to another Minecraft forum page. From this page, you have to find the download link. The actual download page itself is kind of weird, so just bear with me. Try and avoid all of the ads on it and click the small area which I'm showing you now. As you can see, it takes you to a Dropbox page where you can click download. This is the file which simply goes straight into your mods folder. Now if we head back to the first page that we were on for the shaders mod, then you'll find the shaders pack that I suggest. Now I personally recommend using the Sonic Ethers Unbelievable Shaders, or however you want to pronounce Ethers, Ethers, or whatever because it, I don't know, I just seem to really like the feel of it. Which version that you download of it is very much dependent on how much your PC can handle and how in-depth you want it to be. As you can guess, the light version is the least system intensive and probably the easiest to run on any PC. But it doesn't look quite as nice as some of the other ones. Personally, I use the standard version, but it does give me quite low frame rate, which is kind of a bummer. Once you've picked the one that you want to download, just go ahead and download it and we'll put it into the shaders pack folder. The easiest way to find the shaders pack folder is from in-game in Minecraft where you hit escape, options, shaders and then shaders pack folder. This will open the folder for you so all you have to do is drag the file into it. Now you just select the shader pack that you want to use, probably the one that you just downloaded, and hit ok and gaze at the beauty that you now are surrounded in. And that's all I'm showing you guys how to install for now. Those are the ones that I feel are the most helpful for something like controller. And whilst using a shaders mod isn't really necessary, I just felt like it was a nice addition to have in there. So that's it from me guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video, learnt something from it, um, but that's about it really. Leave some feedback in the comment section below, like and subscribe, it always helps. But apart from that, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me on the forums in-game or on YouTube. And thanks again guys, I'll see you next time.